Eye for an eye. Literally. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. In this episode, bullies inflict pain on their victims and enjoy this. They also enjoy this if they receive it back. Let's find out. We start off with a bridezilla surrounded by vengeful friends. Followed by a bully who sleeps with his victim's girlfriend. Assistant takes advantage of a disabled girl and abuses her. Lastly, a bully beats up someone with mental health issues, but meets his anti-hero. Before we start, be sure to give Uncle Royal AI some sugar with a like button. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. I went to a sort of pre-bachelorette party for a sorority sister, who I hadn't seen in a while and who turned out to be a complete bridezilla. One of our other friends from college is pregnant from a one-night stand and does not know who the father is but is keeping the baby. Bridezilla figured out that she is going to be about 8 months pregnant at the wedding and wouldn't let her be a bridesmaid. She was really nasty and called her a tramp and said she should have gotten an abortion. The girl got really upset and left. Almost everybody else did too. One of the girls out partying with us is a nurse practitioner. She invited the remaining girls back to her apartment. I don't know what she gave Bridezilla, but she was out cold really fast. That's where it got really weird. I had had way too much to drink and crashed on the couch when the other girls left. I woke up a couple of hours later looking for the bathroom, and I walked in on the nurse and Bridezilla. Bridezilla was still out cold, but the nurse had her naked from the waist down and on the bed with a bunch of pillows under her and her legs spread like she was giving her a gyno exam. I then saw her hold something up and laugh and I realized what she had just done, she had removed Bridezilla's birth control. I got really upset at first and started yelling at her that she was a psycho, so she just flushed it down the toilet and reminded me that if I said anything, Bridezilla would probably have both of us arrested. I realized she was right of course. And it didn't help I was really drunk. When she saw I was backing down, she laughed and explained that her birth control was the copper kind, with no hormones to stay behind in her body to prevent ovulating and that with any luck Bridezilla would be showing a baby bump by her wedding day. At first I was going to keep my mouth shut, but I had second thoughts and felt guilty and tried to contact Bridezilla later to warn her somehow, but she wouldn't return my calls and texted me that she was angry at me for inviting our pregnant friend out that night. She texted some really nasty things about her. So I decided Bridezilla really deserved what was coming to her. But I didn't want to bring an unwanted baby into the world. I spread a rumor that she had gotten really drunk that night and told us she was getting her birth control removed because she wanted to make sure her fiancé was on the hook with a baby just in case he got cold feet before the wedding. Word got back to him, and he insisted on checking for her strings himself and then dragging her to the walk-in clinic when he couldn't feel them. By the end of her exam the wedding was off. Word is she just got a D and C. So not only did we get revenge on her for being a total doo-doo, we also saved a nice guy from a bad marriage. I sexy timed his brains out last weekend. He deserved it, and so did she. I have had an on-off again relationship with this girl since junior high, we've constantly been in each other's lives, even to this day we still talk. Let's call her Lucy. I thought I was in love with her, shocker I wasn't, but in high school things got pretty serious between us. The more serious we got the worse we treated each other when we fought. It was the most toxic relationship I have ever been in but we're actually great friends now. At the time I was working stock crew at the mall toy store, sometimes it was a early morning shift, sometimes it was overnight, so my sleep schedule was all messed up. We were dating and sleeping together pretty regularly my entire senior year. She had her circle of friends and I had my own, they rarely intersected. Enter Prick Kyle. Your typical bully. Now Prick Kyle gave a bad name to all other monster chugging, drywall assaulting Kyles. He was physically and mentally abusive to his girlfriend, who became his wife later on, he manipulated his friends into letting him walk all over them, got one girl hooked on pills after he got her pregnant so she would be forced to give the baby up, just a next level scumbag. Kyle was a part of both our circles. He was friends with a few acquaintances I had, 
Lucy was pretty close to his girlfriend. Her name was Hannah. Lucy and I had just had a really bad fight a few days before and had made up in our usual way. As I was getting ready to go to bed for work the next morning my phone went off, it was a text from Kyle followed by three pictures. One nude of my Lucy alone, one of my girlfriend and his, and the last one only half loaded but it was clearly a picture of my girlfriend giving him a oral present. I was furious, but as I was already graduated I wouldn't run into him again to take my rage out the traditional way, so I just said forget it and moved on with my life. I was still mad at Lucy for cheating on me again so we fought it out a few times and eventually made up when she told me the whole story. We both cheated before this multiple times so the revenge not based on that. Kyle did me wrong here. Kyle had told her I was sleeping with his girlfriend's sister or something and that this was how she should get back at me. Now was it petty and dumb? Absolutely. But she wasn't so bright and the story wasn't so far-fetched that she didn't believe him. She told me that since it was crap on Kyle's end she was done with both of us, we went on with our lives. A few years go by, Lucy has moved to another state but we still keep in touch and out of the blue, Kyle's wife hits me up on the book of faces. Seems karma didn't forget about me. We talk about how life has been and what not, where we live and such. Turns out she's just down the street from me. We keep talking every so often when she texts one day asking for a favor. I'm not working that day and bored out of my mind so I oblige and run a pack of smokes down to her, since she's out and can't get more because of her kid. I get to her apartment and we hang out for a bit talking. We head out to the patio for a cigarette and in the daylight her shirt is almost completely see-through. I make a offhand comment about it and without a second thought she pulls her shirt off. We go back inside and go to town on each other on her and Kyle's bed, we keep the affair going a few weeks then just kinda stop. At this point I felt my revenge was complete, I had this guy's wife on his bed and he want no till they get into another huge fight. I wipe my hands of the drama and go about my day. Fast forward another few years, my band had just finished a huge show before we went on tour and as I'm doing the meet and greet thing at our merch booth, I get a Facebook message from Kyle. Kyle was in the hospital, he said it was serious and had a question. Did you ever spend time with my wife? I'm looking at this text thinking of all the ways I could mess with his head, but decided to probe a little by saying, I think that's something you should ask her first. He replies, I did and she told me something happened at our apartment. I need to know if it's true. So I think for a second and send him two pictures we took, one of her giving me an oral present, and one of the aftermath. He just replies with, thanks and blocked me. I think good, now the prick knows what it feels like and go about my Mary. But this story isn't done yet friends, not by a long shot. See unbeknownst to me, Kyle and his wife had another kid around 9 months after our affair and it wasn't Kyle's. From the pictures it was obvious that we didn't use protection and there was no pullout game. So he immediately suspected it was mine. Hannah knew better since she was already pregnant when we started but just barely. Kyle viewed me as his enemy ever since high school because I stole all of his friends. So knowing that he was raising the child of someone he hated just burned him up inside. He turned to hard drugs and became a raging alcoholic, tried to get information on where I lived and kept trying to get revenge on me for all of this but failed miserably, lost his job, his family, what few long-time friends he had, basically his life just crashed around him. About two years ago I reconnected with another ex from high school and she told me the aftermath, what Kyle tried to do, what ended up happening to his life. Hannah took him for everything in their divorce. Last I heard he's locked up for robbing a liquor store while carrying methamphetamines and a loaded pistol which landed him in for about 12 years. I was born with cataracts that later became glaucoma when I turned 5. After some years something happened that caused me to lose all vision in my left eye. This meant that I needed an assistant for the rest of my education. So when I was starting middle school, my parents found an assistant to help me with moving around my school. I'll call her Ella for simplicity's sake. Ella was friendly to me and my parents, so they didn't have to worry. Ella did her job and she was super friendly with me. But then it all changed. One day Ella didn't come to school. She called my dad saying that she got in an accident on the road. It was fine, 
She got an accident but it wasn't her fault. I spent the first two weeks of school trying my best to explain to all teachers why I couldn't write the homework and kept giving a convincing argument, I walk around bumping into every wall and person, because she would leave me alone. On top of that, Ella became more and more hostile as the months went by. She then began telling me awful things about my appearance, my personality, and she even talked doo-doo about my parents to other teachers who were just as scummy and unprofessional as her. The only reason why I didn't say anything, was because she made me think that doing so would get me expelled. Me being a stupid 13-year-old, I believed her. Needless to say, I was miserable. The straw that broke the camel's back was the day where she was so angry that she physically abused me, she slapped me. I had enough. I told my dad about everything. The absences, the slander, everything. When I told him, he went absolutely apeshit and we went straight to the principal. After telling her everything that happened, we found out that Ella was present to write herself up as present, but she never arrived to help me. We also found out that she had faked most of her reasons for absence. After a long investigation that took two years to actually prove, we took Ella to court. I only had to testify every single detail of what she did and what she said. Long story short, we won that case and Ella went to prison for three years. After word got out of what Ella did to me and my family. My family had heard that her friends and family basically disowned her. She also lost the remaining custody of her kids which went directly to her husband, who works as a vendor that passes by my school. Ella became forgotten garbage. It's been almost a whole year since Ella went to prison, but I sometimes still hear all the terrible things she said. Thanks to her, I'm scared to make decisions because I can't get her words out of my mind. I'm going to start school soon, maybe I'll finally get that demon woman out of my head. I started seriously learning how to use a cane for blind people now though. For context, this unbelievable story takes place long before I was born. My father told me these stories many times when I was younger. My father wasn't a witness to these acts, but his friends told him the story very detailed, since they were there when it happened. The story took place when my dad was in his late teens or early 20s. There was this guy, Daniel, who was mentally challenged. Occasionally he was able to successfully understand the situation around him, but the majority of the time, he couldn't. Because of that, his friend group constantly protected him, not out of pity, but because they genuinely cared about him. So Daniel was in a bar with a large group of his friends. In comes a jerk named Cage, who decided he didn't like Daniel's mental issues, and decided to poke fun at him. Daniel's friends all forced Cage to back off, but Cage's friends were there too, and they were taller than they were, so they were a bit intimidated. Although they kept close, just in case things went south, and they assumed a verbal assault would be the furthest that this would go. How wrong they were. Cage decides to poke fun at Daniel, making stupid noises at him, purposely talking all wrong and broken as a way to mock his difficulty to speak due to his issues, and well, everything else you can imagine. But like I said, Daniel, most of the time, wasn't able to pick up the things around him, and thus, wasn't phased by the insults, since he couldn't really understand what was going on. This seemingly upset Cage, who then resulted in beating the ever-loving hell out of Daniel. Daniel's friends immediately tossed aside their intimidation of Cage's friends and tried to stop him, but were restrained by Cage's friends while poor Daniel was defenseless against Cage's beating. Two minutes later, Cage stops the beating, laughs at Daniel and kicks him one last time before leaving with his buddies. Daniel's friends take him away to a hospital and inform his parents and older brother. Daniel's brother, we'll call him Vin Johnson. Why? Because, if you take Vin Diesel and Dwayne Johnson, fuse them together. That's Daniel's brother. That's how buffed and jacked he was. He went full Papa Bear mode, seeing red at his beloved little brother being beaten to a pulp and demanded to know who did it, and Daniel's friends informed him, and Vin immediately returned to the bar a day later. I was told this part so many times, and this is what happened and were his exact words. He literally kicked the door open and loudly, and aggressively, asked. Who the fuck beat my brother up yesterday? Which one of you fuckers did it? Start talking or I'll tear this place piece by piece. 
Despite Vin's Hulk-like stature and Darth Vader levels of deep voice, Cage wasn't scared and smugly walked up and told him, I did. What you gonna do about it? Without less than a millisecond later, Vin punched Cage so hard he actually flew back a couple feet. Vin stomped over to Cage and continued to beat him up. He stood above a fallen Cage and rained punches like those you see in movies. Then, he picked him up and threw him into a wall, before grabbing him by the hair and smashing his head onto the pool table several times. Finally, Cage's friends interfered, although they were all beaten up by Vin. Seriously, it was like 5 versus 1, yet Vin whooped their asses. According to my father, whose friends were there and were watching the whole thing, Vin took two of Cage's friends, lifted them both up with one hand each by the throat and smashed their heads onto a glass portrait, knocking them both out instantly and leaving them with several cuts from the falling glass. Then, Vin finished off Cage's remaining friends before returning his attention to Cage himself, who was literally dragging himself across the floor in fear and as Vin grabbed him by the collar of his shirt, Cage begged him to stop, but Vin sarcastically asked him if his little brother Daniel also begged him to stop, and Vin continued to beat the doo-doo out of him. Even after Cage was knocked out, with his face covered in blood, and a few teeth knocked out, Vin continued to beat him up, and was only stopped by Daniel's friends, who told him to stop, otherwise he could kill him. Vin actually responded with, I still don't see the problem. The bartender was watching, but knowing what a piece of doo-doo Cage was, decided not to do anything. Yep, Cage was that much of an prick, but since he paid for beer almost every day, the bartender wouldn't throw him out. Vin decided to end the beating by picking the now unconscious Cage one last time and threw him across the bar, and Cage's head smashed against a jukebox. Vin and Daniel's friends walked away, and the bartender called an ambulance for Cage and his friends. A few weeks later, Daniel was dispatched from the hospital and only suffered bruises, but was overall alright. When Daniel's friends returned to the bar sometime later, they asked the bartender if he knew what happened to Cage and his friends, and the bartender actually knew almost everything that happened. Apparently, Cage's parents decided to find out what actually happened, since one of Cage's eyes had suffered so much damage, he actually became blind in one eye, and asked for security footage, but the bar didn't have cameras, so there was nothing. However, the bartender actually came clean and told them all that happened, and what Cage had done to deserve the beating. Surprisingly, the parents were not entitled and understood the situation and asked the bartender to tell Vin and his family they were sorry for their son's behavior. They promised to update him on Cage's future to inform Daniel's family about Cage's punishment. Then, according to the bartender, Cage's parents refused to take him back home, and literally threw him out on the streets, telling him that if he was willing to beat a defenseless person, then he too, shall become defenseless without support from his family. Cage became homeless, his friends abandoned him and became a loner. One day, Vin actually passed by Cage while driving his car, and since it had been a day after a rainy day, there were water puddles around, and Vin purposely drove over one, which splashed over to Cage, making completely soaked in dirty water. Cage began cursing at him, but as Vin slowed down and looked over, Cage recognized Vin and fled immediately. Not too long after, Cage was arrested for trying to steal food off a local market, and his parents actually further added to his sentence over the beating he gave to Daniel, making Cage spend some good quality time in jail. After getting out, however, Cage was finally allowed to go back home, but had to live with restrictions until he got himself a job, a house of his own, and could support himself. Thank you for enjoying this episode which was made with artificial love. Subscribe or give Royal AI some sugar by avenging the like button. Could you imagine doing one of these acts yourself? Share your experience below. I'll join the conversation.